Hey, hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you are doing well today and welcome to lesson two of the Node.js REST API course. Uh, in today's video, we are going to take a look at how we can further improve our REST API by doing a couple of things. The first of which is to somehow track the parameters that we are including inside of our routes. So for example, we are going to use a user slash ID route to kind of search for a user inside of our database. And the database that we will connect to is a local instance of MySQL that I have on my computer. And we're going to execute some SQL queries to fetch the user data that we're looking for through this parameter over here. All right, so hopefully that makes sense and sounds good to you. Let's go ahead and begin by jumping back into the terminal right now. All right, everyone, hopefully you are ready to start today's coding session. And before I type out any additional code, I would like to actually switch to the Visual Studio Code Editor instead, because it's much, much better than Atom. And I'll tell you why in uh, just a couple of seconds here. Now I'm going to go back into Terminal and open, let's see, open dash A and use Visual Studio Code on the current directory like that. And let's hit enter and that'll open up Visual Studio Code. So if you don't have it installed, make sure to Google for this program and download it over there. All right, so the moment that you open up VS Code, you'll kind of see app.js open over here. And this is the file that we worked on in the very last lesson. And you'll see our project explorer inside of this pane. And you can go down to this fifth panel, which will allow you to install some extensions inside of VS Code. And the one that you'll need is this guy called Terminal. So make sure to install it and then restart your editor. And the moment that you do that, you'll have this button down here that can launch a terminal for you. If you don't see that button, you can also go to the command palette over here and open uh, integrated terminal and it'll launch this little box for you. All right, so good stuff there. And the reason why I want to use VS Code instead of Atom is because it comes with a really, really good auto completion for JavaScript. So let's say I want to type in this code called listen, which I showed you in the very last video, right? So if you type in listen and just use a parentheses, you'll see that the first parameter is going to be the port. And then you have a couple of other things followed by the callback function that we specified using this fat arrow syntax thing. All right, so make sure to download this editor. It's going to make your lives a lot easier and it's going to make my life easier in terms of teaching you how Node.js works. Okay, so good stuff. Let me just remove that line of code there. And let's kind of talk about how we want to connect to MySQL in terms of using Node.js. All right, so the way you want to do this is to go into terminal over here and you want to install the MySQL package first. So let's say npm install and MySQL. And let's see, we're going to pull the data, pull the package from npm and we now have it install and let's look at package json and you'll see these three dependencies right over there mysql and so let's head back into app.js and why don't we start up our server again with nodemon.app.js and there we go this guy is going to start up our server and watch for the changes inside of our app.js file if we go inside of here and go back to let's see users and just hit enter over there we will have this dummy set of data, Stephen Curry and Kevin Durant at this route called users. And that is pretty good. And so let's kind of talk about MySQL for a second here before we type out any connection code. And so I have set up on my computer, my local computer, a database called LBTA MySQL. And I'm going to connect to this SQL server or MySQL server. And we're going to pull down some data that's showing up inside of my users table. So I have about six users right now. And let's say I want to access a certain user by their ID, let's say two or six. We're going to figure out how to print out this data inside of our browser somehow. All right, so that's the ultimate goal for us today. And the way I'm going to actually call that data or look for that data is to use a route called user and I'm going to specify the ID with just a number. So if I say two, I should be returning Stephen Curry and then six for Draymond Green. All right, so let me show you how to do that by first specifying a brand new route for user and the ID. 
So let me bring this back down. And let's see, inside of our app.js file, what do I want to do? Well, why don't I specify a new route with app? And let's say get, and let's see, quote slash user, and let's say colon ID, okay? And then next, I'll specify my callback with a request and a, res a response, fat arrow, and brace brace. Okay, so this route over here is going to capture the ID using this wildcard syntax over there. And the way that you get the actual ID is to simply say this. So I'm going to log it out with log and we're fetching user with ID. And let's see, what is this ID? Well, it comes from the request parameter of request params and ID. And so if you save this right now, and then you run this URL again, you'll see that cannot get user with the two. Okay, so why exactly is that happening? Well, this is actually working, but uh, the response isn't ending, so we're getting this guy over here. And so let me end this request with a response. So the user ID will say response, and we'll end it like so, and we'll hit save and we'll see the changes, and you'll see that the request actually stopped. The logger down here is showing that we are trying to fetch a user for ID of two. And if we change this to, let's say something, perhaps six, you'll see that we're trying to fetch a user for six right now. So the ID is pretty much stored inside of this parameter over there. And now this means that we're ready to kind of fetch the data from MySQL somehow. Okay, so, Let's see how exactly we get the data from MySQL. So for the ID of six, we should return first name, last name of Draymond Green. And I'll show you how to do that really easily. And uh, first thing I'll do is to go all the way up to the very top of the file, and we will import this new variable called MySQL, and we'll just require, and here type in MySQL, it should show up right there if you installed your MySQL package correctly. And inside of your route, we're going to say something like const, and we'll create a new variable called connection. And const is a final variable that, that's not modifiable. So let's just create this as MySQL. And MySQL is referring to this variable up there. You have something called create connection, and we'll just hit enter. And this guy, you have to provide it with some configuration uh, properties inside of this brace object. So the first thing you need to do is to provide something called a host, right? So if you hit control space, you'll see all of these properties over here showing up. So host is right there. And the host, I'm going to use local host because I'll be connecting to my local MySQL instance. And the next thing you need to provide is the user property that you want to log in as. Now I've created a user or the default installation of MySQL comes with a user account and you don't need to really provide a password at least for the way i set it up so i'm just going to leave the password either completely empty or just not provided at all and the third property i need to actually use is the database property and because i have my database over here as lbta mysql i'm just going to connect to that right off the bat here so lbta and mysql Okay, so great stuff there. And the question is, now with this connection variable, what do I want to do with it? Well, I'm going to execute a SQL query to pull down some data from my database. So let's say I say connection, and connection has a method called query on it, where you can provide two parameters. The first one is your actual query. So let's say select from, let's see, from users. We can just do that without the where clause, so where it will look like that. So we'll just select from users. And the next parameter you need to provide is the callback for whenever your query is done. And that'll come back with three parameters of an error, results, and fields. So let me show you how this works really quickly. And we'll say rows and fields and fat arrow and brace brace and hopefully once you see this in action you'll kind of understand what's going on so if i go ahead and say let's see console and we'll log out you know you know i think i think we fetched users successfully 
So I'm just going to log that out. I'm going to save and rerun this uh, URL route. And so we'll just see what we logged out in the bottom. And it says that I think we fetched users successfully. So we think we did that. And what happens if we just say response and JSON with this rows parameter over there? And so let's say rows. And the thing that you have to watch out for here is that you can't exactly execute the res end because we don't want to end the request. We want to wait for the connection to finish here. And once we hit save, we'll have these changes in. I'll refresh this over here. And you'll see that this route is now currently rendering out all of the users in my database, starting from ID 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. And that's exactly what we have over here, 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. And the route is actually looking for the ID of six, and that should return only Draymond Green over here, right? So let me show you how to filter down the query request by fixing the query itself over here. And instead of typing this out in line, it's probably better if you declare another variable called query string equals that, and then pop in a query string instead of your method call. Okay. So the obvious thing that you want to do is to specify a where clause for your query. And we'll say where ID equals the question mark, or you can say six, right? So instead of just typing in six, you want to use the question mark. And this guy you can fill in as a parameter instead of your query method call. So I'm going to use a bracket bracket. And anything that you type in here will be filled out for the question marks. So let's say, for example, we pop in request params ID over here. So why don't we make this a little bit cleaner as cost and let's say user ID equals that. And then we will use user ID in here. And so what that is going to do for us is if I hit save right now, we'll take in these new changes, refresh this guy over here. We'll see that the ID of six returns us dream on green. And if I pop in two, we have Stephen Curry. And that's exactly what my current MySQL database data is showing up as in here. Okay, so that's pretty much how you connect to MySQL and try to request for some data. And the thing about this connection over here is that we're not exactly capturing the error or we're not dealing with it properly. So let's say if we typed in this SQL query incorrectly, right? So let's say we typed it in with that and hit save and we got the new changes, refresh this, and you'll see that it says that I think we fetched our users successfully, but it didn't really do anything, right? And so what you want to do instead is you want to actually check for this error. And let me show you how to do that. And there's a couple of ways of doing this. So I'm going to say if error, I'm going to say console.log and fail to query for users. I'll say add in the error at the very end. And you can simply just say return, or you can also say a res.end like that. And then we'll save. And let's say we punch back in the incorrect syntax. We'll save, we'll hit refresh. And you'll see that we failed to query for users. And it says that we have some kind of syntactical error with the from one, two, three. So that looks pretty good. And what you can also do is instead of just ending your request with the response end, you can actually tell your response to signal an error. So let's say res.send status. And the HTTP status code for something that went wrong in your server is 500. So let me just hit save. And I think I can run this now. So it says internal server error. And so whenever Chrome encounters a code of 500, it'll just show you the server error like that. And that's kind of how you would handle this error. Now you can also say, I believe you can just say throw error as well. So if you save this and you refresh that, you'll get this error to be tossed or thrown inside of your Node.js server. So I don't exactly like this. So I'm just going to return like that and uh, keep your code super clean and compact like so. If I refresh now, We'll get that error. If I remove one, two, three, you can save that. And that'll give you your user based on the ID that you're searching for. All right, so now that you understand how to query for data using Node.js and MySQL, you're probably curious as to how you can provide some custom formatting for your JSON output over here. 
So let's say, for example, you want to use camel case instead of snake case for these properties, right? We can modify our code so that we can do just that. And let me show you how that works by modifying some code over here. So where are we? I want to declare a new variable and maybe we want to use const and we'll call this users equals something. So this might be a little bit confusing, but I'm going to execute a map method on my rows that I'm getting back from my SQL. And the map is actually going to take in a function over here. So again, this is probably going to be a little bit confusing. So let's say a row and we use fat arrow like this. So all you gotta do in here is to return something that you want to render out. So let's say ABC and we'll say colon one, two, three. And the users guy, I'm going to paste it in there and hit save and run my route again. So refresh and you'll see ABC one, two, three, right? So obviously that's not what we want. And instead I can say something like first name with the camel case and then I can access the actual row dot first name with the snake case over here. So I'll save that, refresh that, and you'll see first name in camel case over there. So you have to be very careful how you access your columns, and it has to match exactly how you specified it instead of your MySQL database setup. So we're using snake case over here. Now you can do whatever you want. So you can also specify last name like that, and you'll say the row last name, hit the save, hit the refresh, you'll get first and last name. And you probably want to omit the ID depending on how secure you want your data to be. But uh, yeah, this is how you provide custom formatting for your JSON responses. All right, everyone, that is going to wrap it up for today's video on how to connect to a MySQL server using Node.js. And as you can see, it's very, very simple how you can do this with just a couple of lines of code. If you want to download today's project, make sure to find the link in the description below. Now, if you have any comments or questions, make sure to hit me up on Twitter or Instagram at build that app. That's going to be it for today. I will see you in the very next episode. Bye bye, guys.